macOS Sonoma has just launched as I'm releasing this video, and whilst the changes this year aren't as significant as previous years, or even the other operating systems, there are some great new features available for your Mac. But knowing where to start can be difficult, so in this video, I'm going to show you eight things I think you should check out right away. Stick with me to the end of the video if you want to know what your Mac can now do. Okay, let's get into it. Wallpaper on your Mac has just gotten significantly more interesting with the inclusion of animated video wallpapers. When locked, these wallpapers play just like the ones you get on the Apple TV. The second you log in, they do this nice little freeze animation, pausing at whatever point the video stopped at, meaning that your wallpaper could theoretically be different every time that you log in. To choose a wallpaper, open System Settings and choose Wallpaper from the left menu. The dynamic wallpapers from the previous OS are still there, but you've now also got Landscape, Cityscape, Underwater and Earth, and you can either click on one to download it and use it, or you go to Shuffle and choose to shuffle a collection or all of them. Apple have been adding to these throughout the beta releases, so it is possible that we might see more get added to this over time. If there are any websites or services that you use on a regular basis, you can add them to your dock as a web app, making accessing them quicker and easier, and it's really easy to do. So here, for example, I've got YouTube open in Safari. I can go to File and then choose Add to Dock, and this does a couple of things. First, it adds a direct link to YouTube, complete with the logo, in the dock of my Mac, so I can just click on that anytime that I like and it will open YouTube. But notice how it does it. It opens YouTube in its own Safari web app, so it looks cleaner and is less cluttered. It's a simple change, but a good one if you're someone who uses the dock a lot and has websites that you tend to use all the time and treat them like apps anyway. And if you want to remove a web app, open Launchpad. Notice that you can see the app in here also. Just drag the icon to the bin. Just like that, it's gone. You can now add widgets to your Mac's desktop, just like you can on your iPhone and your iPad. It's a similar experience across all the major Apple devices, and if you've found a use for them on your smaller devices, you might also find a use for them here on your Mac. To add a widget, right-click on your desktop and choose Edit Widgets. You can search for the ones that you want, you can choose all widgets to scroll through everything that your Mac has to offer, or you can choose by app. To add a widget, this battery one for example, just tap the green plus to add it. You can then drag it around as you wish, and you tap the minus button if you want to get rid of it. I'll add a reminders widget. Notice that if you then tap on the widget itself, you can choose specifics for the widget. So here, for example, you can choose which reminders list specifically you'd like to display here. Oh, and these widgets are interactive, just like on iPhone and iPad now, which is really useful. Also, notice that I've got a Spotify widget here, even though Spotify isn't installed on this Mac. Your Mac can now display some widgets from your iPhone, so long as they're both up to date and on the same Apple ID. So if there is a particular widget from a third party that you use all the time on your phone, you might be able to use it here. Also, notice what happens if I open an app. The widgets grey out into the background, only illuminating again when you tap on the desktop, meaning that you can avoid distractions while you're working, but quickly get access to the information that you need when you want it. I reckon this is going to be better for those of us who use big external displays, but drop me a comment and let me know how you're going to use widgets here on the Mac now. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video, complete with screenshots, and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created, plus future ones for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you see on screen, or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. If you use a video conferencing service like Zoom, there are some excellent new features in OS Sonoma that you should absolutely try out. So in this example, you can see that I've joined a Zoom meeting, and if I click on the green camera icon up at the top of the screen, I have some options to use within the app. I can enable or disable portrait mode and choose how much intensity I want to use. Portrait mode is where the background is blurred out, helping to ensure that the focus is on you and not on your cluttered background. Then there's studio light underneath that, which helps to highlight you and can be useful if you perhaps don't have a great lighting setup. Again, you can play around with the settings here. Reactions are honestly a bit corny, but I can imagine some situations where you might use them to lighten a meeting up a little. You either tap on the buttons on screen to choose a reaction, or you can do things like thumbs up or love heart with your hands to trigger them instead. Below that, you've got a couple of microphone modes to choose from, either standard or voice isolation, which can be useful if you're in a less than ideal area when you're on a video call. 
If you then begin sharing your screen, you've got some additional options there related specifically to screen sharing. Notice that when you're sharing your screen, the button becomes purple instead of green. Here you can play around with the presenter overlay, choosing from either a small overlay where your face gets dropped into this small circle that you can then move around the screen, or large where your face is still the focus, but whatever you're presenting is still very much visible in the background. You can combine all of these different things together, which is good. So I guess it's gonna be a case of trying everything out until you find something that you like. A huge feature that's come to Safari across all platforms this year is the inclusion of profiles. So let me show you how to create them on your Mac. In Safari, choose Safari from the menu bar up top and then settings. Here you'll see a new option called profiles. If you've not already started using the feature, you'll see the option start using profiles. Notice that this also gives you some information about what profiles are. They're like separate versions of Safari with their own separate history, cookies and website data assigned to each one. And you can have lots of different ones if you wish. Choose start using profiles. On this next page, we'll give our profile a name. You could of course have one for personal use, one for work, one for school maybe, or you could get a bit more granular. So I'll call mine work project. Assign a symbol and then do the same for a color. You also have the option of creating a new bookmarks folder for this profile or using an existing one. Choose create profile when you're done. So we've created our profile as the extremely bright wallpaper will confirm. You can see in the upper left that this window is a work project window. You can see that if I click there, I can create a new window in the work project profile, or I can create one in the personal profile as well as being able to switch between the two profiles. Let me show you why this is useful. I've logged into Google using my work project profile, but I've not logged in on the personal profile. I've put the two windows side by side, and if I refresh both pages, you can see that the work project profile is still very much logged in, while the personal one isn't. So if you have different logins for different websites that you use, depending on the kind of work that you're doing, profiles are a quick and effective way of managing them. If you have websites or web apps that you access using a login that you share with another trusted contact, you can now create password groups specifically designed to let you share constantly updated passwords with other people. Open settings, choose passwords and unlock the option using your computer password. On the next screen, choose the plus icon next to the search bar and choose new shared group. You can see that your Mac will explain to you what this is and how it works. We're going to assign people to our group and we can choose which passwords we do and don't want to share. Choose continue. We'll give the group a name. I'm going to call this one family. And then we need to choose add people to begin adding contacts to our group. Simply search for the contact from your contacts list and add them in by selecting them and choosing add. When you're ready, choose create. You can see that your Mac may prompt you to ensure that both you and the other contacts in your group have updated your devices to the most recent operating systems to ensure that this works. On the next screen, you're going to choose the passwords to move. This is important because you're not copying passwords from one group to another. We actually move them from our main account into the family group in this instance. Don't worry though, you'll still have full access to the passwords. And if anyone has to change the password, it gets updated for everyone automatically. If you like, you can notify the person by a message that you've shared the password group with them. And that's it. The password group is created. If you tap on the plus icon here, you can create a new password, move passwords into this group or add people to it. And if you tap manage just above this, you can delete members if you need to, giving you full control over how you share passwords. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my free newsletter, The Proper Weekly, which you can do via the link in the description of this video or by scanning the QR code on screen now. The newsletter goes out each Friday and I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. Notes is a great stock Apple app, better than ever now. And whilst it's great for jotting down ideas and research, it's not so good if you want to then take that information and present it in a slicker format. In Sonoma, you can now take a note and with one click, dump the contents of that note into pages. So to do this, open a note in the notes app and click the share button. From the drop down menu, choose open in pages. Your computer will take a moment to convert the content over, but then here it is visible in a new pages file. 
Now, obviously, once you've got the content here, you still need to go through and format it how you want to in pages. There isn't a magic button that you can tap that does that for you, which is kind of a shame. I reckon with AI, that's something that Apple could and should implement, perhaps in a future version. But if nothing else, you've now got a quick way of getting content from notes into pages. Spotlight Search isn't new in macOS Sonoma, but it is improved, and I would absolutely encourage you to check it out, whether you're someone who lives in Spotlight Search on your Mac like I do, or whether you're someone who doesn't really know what all the fuss is about. There's never been a better time to start using it than here on Sonoma. A reminder, you access Spotlight Search by tapping Command and Spacebar. You can search for pretty much anything. There are far too many things to cover here in this short video section. I've created an entire video all about Spotlight Search on the Mac, which I'll link to in the description of this video. But you can see on screen now the kind of searches that you can run and get really rich, useful information back. Sports teams, music artists, the weather in different parts of the world, the time in different parts of the world. You can run conversions and perform mathematical sums here. You can look up stock just by typing in the name of the stock. It's really clever and more than ever, your Mac can provide you with a wealth of information just by quickly typing something into Spotlight Search. Definitely check it out in Sonoma. I reckon it's something you'll find yourself using all the time. So there you go. Those are the eight things I think you should check out right away after updating to macOS Sonoma. What do you think? Anything here that I should have included instead? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.